Today, guys, we're going to have a bit of fun with my doorman, Arlo. We'll be teaching him to jump through a hoop. Now, I'm really excited about this. It should be a great way to help get in his exercise throughout the day. But more than that, as we go, you're going to see some really solid basic doorman training principles, and you'll see a technique that you can use with your doorman to really train them in just kind of a long list of other really fun and exciting commands. Okay, so what should our end goal look like? Well, I've seen some Dobermans do some things like this. And my starting point is with this. Through. Okay, all right, clearly we have a ways to go with Arlo, and maybe the ultimate hoop jump we get out of him today isn't gonna be played back in slow-mo with cool music anytime soon, but let's see if we can't create a strong foundation and a really cool new command for Arlo to add to the list of commands that he already knows, and who knows, maybe this might be a great first step for some agility work down the road. So. Let's get started. Now, the first step is to simply just introduce the hoop calmly to Arlo. Um, this is a basic hoop I got off of Amazon. I like it because it's just really simple and basic, and it doesn't have a lot of lights or noise makers, which can freak out a dog. Some hoops do have that. They have a bead inside and that kind of thing. Um, but like any new piece of equipment with your dog, whether it's a hoop to jump through or maybe just a new crate to sleep in or anything, you want to introduce it really slowly to your doberman to ensure that there's only really good feelings around it and associated with it. It also doesn't hurt to have a treat or some extra praise while they're sniffing and investigating the object or to have the dog see you smiling and interacting with the object yourself in a real positive manner. These things all really help to get them comfortable with this new thing that you expect them to be interacting with. Let them get the scent of it, let them sniff it, let them investigate it. Um, all these things are super important and you really don't want to have a stumble or uh, a trip over it or something that'll scare the dog, especially early on because it could really turn them off to this new piece of equipment. So this is especially true like if you have a really young energetic Doberman and you're introducing them to this hoop, for example, it, it, they're a lot more clumsy than older Dobermans and if they have a bad trip early on, it could really freak them out and start you off on the wrong foot. So right here, we're just gonna get him really just used to this and feeling some good feelings around this hoop. Now, while Arlo is getting used to this hoop and getting kind of accustomed to it, it's a great time to select a verbal command and a visual cue for your dog for this trick. And a visual cue is really important for the Doberman breed specifically. It may not be as important for other breeds. They can maybe operate just fine off tons of verbal commands. And the Doberman can too, but they're supercharged with an additional visual cue because Dobermans are so focused on their owners. They're always watching your body language. So incorporating something visual for them besides your verbal command can really help. So I really like to keep it really simple, something that I will remember, stay really consistent with, something that just kind of comes natural to you is a great choice. Um, I'm gonna do the command through for my verbal cue. Um, it's really basic, it's simple, it's a great command for maybe agility classes down the road if we wanna incorporate this later on. And as far as a visual cue, I'm gonna be doing kind of a sweeping motion with my hand pointing in the direction that I want Arlo to go. This is just comes natural to me, so I know I'll be consistent with it. And it's a great motion for kind of tossing a treat too early on in training when I'm trying to convince him to do what I want. Now next up is a really important step and it's to choose a reward that's gonna work really well for Arlo. And it's something that you should really be doing with everything you train your Doberman. Um, What's going to motivate your dog? Options are things just like a treat. That's a, probably one of the most common because a lot of Dobermans are food motivated. Attention and praise. That's another common one. Uh, a certain toy that they really love, a game that they like. These are all valid options for a reward during training. Um, I know just simply from working with Arlo, seeing his interactions and how he reacts to certain rewards, that praise and reward is probably the top for him, followed closely by treats. They might even be tied for Arlo. Now, if you don't know what motivates your dog, pay really close attention to how excited they get about different rewards during training and experiment with some of these. One cool trick is a trick that a lot of guide dog schools use. They find out if a puppy is highly treat motivated by placing a treat underneath an upside down clear Tupperware, Tupperware uh, bowl where the dog can see the treat through the bowl and the dog kind of bats at it and tries to get at the treat and they encourage the dog to do so. 
and how long the dog sticks with that and tries to get at the treat indicates their level of food motivation. If pretty quickly they wander off and go sniff the grass or do something else, then they're probably not highly food motivated. So these are some tools that you can use to find out what really motivates your dog and use that during training. For Arlo, we're gonna also go one step further. We're gonna supercharge this by doing unpredictable rewards. This is a great way to boost motivation. So not only am I using rewards that he likes, but I'm gonna mix them up. I'm not gonna always do, for example, the same training treat every time. Maybe initially to get him started on it, but then we're gonna mix in some praise and reward. I might even mix in a toy that he really likes. So he doesn't know exactly what reward's gonna come. It could potentially really boost his motivation here while we train this. Now the next step is to coax the action and reward it immediately. Now this is really kind of the first step of actually training this behavior in Arlo. And uh, we're just gonna kind of coax him through the hoop any way we can. Any way we can get him to go through, usually just leading him through with a treat works pretty well with this type of thing. Uh, and then just reward heavily as soon as possible. Um, now don't forget to include your verbal command and your visual cue as much as possible while you're doing this, just to kind of get him accustomed to it. Okay, now we got Arlo pretty well accustomed to it, at least introduced to going through the hoop. Now we're gonna really up his excitement, get him really amped up about doing it, get a little a spring in his step, and maybe increase his eagerness to perform this trick for us uh, going forward. Ready, ready, steady. Through. Good boy, good through. Good boy, good boy. Through. Good through, good boy. You ready, buddy? You ready? You ready? You ready? Through. Good boy, yes. Okay, Arlo seems to be getting really used to this task and you can see how getting him extra excited about it really puts that spring in his step and makes him more eager to perform this. Uh, and he's loving that praise afterwards. So that's really working well too. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Okay, before we get really serious here and getting Arlo to full-fledged jump through this hoop, I do want to take a minute to ask you to hit that subscribe button down below if you've been enjoying this and you're getting anything from it that might help you with your dog. Uh, that way you won't miss any of the future adventures with Arlo and I. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Okay, step five is to continue upping the bar. And the way we're gonna do this is just keep raising that uh, hoop little by little each time, making kind of a mental note of where we're at and trying to improve the next time from uh, the previous time. And as we go, we're gonna be really encouraging Arlo to do this. Uh, we're gonna be rewarding him a lot, maybe mixing up the rewards, sometimes just praise, lots of treats too, uh, and maybe even a, a toy, throwing a toy as a reward there too that he really likes and take some breaks along the way as we go. You probably won't see a lot of the breaks, but we'll definitely be taking breaks as we go along. And this is like the most motivating part because your dog's improving, it motivates your dog, and you're seeing this improvement and it just is exciting for you to keep going as the owner. Okay, let's get going and see how Arlo does. One thing worth noting, guys, is I'm not gonna reward him when he doesn't do what I want. Like if he goes around the hoop, for example, I'm not gonna reward him, but, uh, or up the bar. I'm gonna leave the bar where it's at, I'm gonna leave the, the hoop, the height off the ground where it's at, uh, and keep it there until he's pretty successful going through that before I raise it. Three. Good boy. Yeah. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Through. Yes. Yes. That was such a good one. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Yes. Through. Yeah. Good boy. Good dog. Yes. Through. Yeah. Good boy. The next step is to repeat and reinforce this. I'm just gonna run Arlo through this a handful more times at basically where he's at right now in the command, just to really get it ingrained in him. And over the next coming days, I'll probably once a day be running him through this a handful of times, and then we'll lower it down maybe a couple times a week and maybe a little bit less than that, depending on how much uh, I want him to have this uh, ingrained in him. This is exciting though. He's really doing well, and he's struggling to get that back end up and over the hoop, and he's really consciously thinking about getting that rear end up and over, which is great to see because that's a sticking point for a lot of dogs. Is sometimes that rear end just catches on the hoop over and over again. But this is so much fun. This is how you build your Doberman's list of what they're capable of is things like this. Repeat it, we're gonna reinforce it, and then, you know, then we don't have to do it as often and he can still do it anytime we ask and we'll try a new command. Guys, I think we learned some really important points here that are important to remember. Um, first off, introduce any new piece of equipment slowly to your dog. Dobermans are very curious by nature and you wanna keep them curious and happy and confident in the situation. You don't want a fear reaction or they're gonna be afraid to interact with that piece of equipment in the future. Also pick a simple and unique verbal cue for your dog. Now we use the command through while I was doing that with Arlo, um, which could also be used later on for agility courses down the road. Um, also pick a simple and unique visual cue. Dobermans are super focused on their owners and their body language. Use that to your advantage. Incorporate something visual along with the verbal cue. I use the sweeping hand motion through the hoop. 
Um, and that just comes naturally to me, so it's really easy for me to be consistent with that. Um, and consistency is important also. Use a reward that'll motivate your dog. Pay attention to how your dog reacts to different rewards you give them. Do experiments if you need to to find out what motivates your dog, but spending some time slowing things down and focusing on what reward works best for your dog early on is going to pay off a lot, uh, pay off really well later on. Um, reward your dog as quickly as possible. As soon as they do the action you want, boom, hit them with a treat or hit them with whatever the reward is immediately. That's actually why clicker training has such a following because clickers are a great way to immediately mark a good behavior of your dog um, and speed is important here. Repeat reinforce and continue upping the bar. In this case, to up the bar, I kept uh, raising the hoop higher and higher as time went by. Um, that is very important too, and I'll continue to do that in the next coming weeks and months if I wanna improve um, Arlo's jump through the hoop. Arlo has a great foundation, guys, to work off of, and I'm really excited to continue this and see how good his jump through the hoop gets down the road. And, you know, I'm so proud of Arlo. I mean, that's not saying much, because I'm just always proud of him, so, so <laughs> he can do anything I'm proud of. But, I think this is a great foundation to build off of. And yes, when I got to work today, Arlo did run straight to his bed and lay down when I first got here. That was a behavior I trained in him. And actually, I filmed myself training that behavior in him. He used to just come to my office and do circles and go crazy and do donuts when he came to work with me. Now he goes right to his bed and lays down. If you want to see all about exactly how I did that, because I did film the whole thing, that should be popping up in the corner of your screen. I really appreciate you guys dropping in and seeing what me and Arlo were up to today. I got a lot of more fun stuff planned with Arlo, really fun stuff planned with him that I don't think you're going to want to miss. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and the bell icon next to it. That way, you'll You'll get notified as soon as another video with me and my buddy Arlo is released. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Hit that like button too before you go anywhere, and I'll see you next time.